speak to Isaac, the expert. And speaking of experts, we have with us right now Rabbi Tzvi Ortner, head of the Alachic Tech USA, and also Nachman Doman, joins representative of Isman Technology. We invited uh, the other company that's making a lot of waves to be on the broadcast uh, tonight as well. And uh, we will uh, have invited them, and they, they may appear one week from tonight. I'm talking about the new technology that's creating the whole hula blue. Gentlemen, Shavuot welcome to the broadcast. My name is Nachum Delman. I just wanted to clarify that. My company is Corporate Media, and we're here representing um, the non-technology people. Right, and uh, and my head, Rabbi Tzvi Ortner, you're also consulting a lot of groups, and obviously also with Zman Technology. So, is there a change? Is you know, from what I understand, at one point the whole question of electricity at one point was debated. Is there a change right now as far as the status of electricity is concerned? Not, not really. The the question of electricity is an old question already, talking uh, long years ago. The question now is about uh, a new way how to turn on or off the electricity. You talk, you t- we're talking about the kosher switch, which has gotten a lot of hit, hits on Facebook and email people talking about it, and they say they have the approbation of leading rabbis in Gadol. When we invited them on the broadcast, as I said earlier, and hopefully they'll join us one week, but uh, they say that there is a new change out there, new technology and new device out there that will allow within the Shabbos framework, with the Lachic framework, to use new technology, which would mean that you can use electricity on Shabbos, is what they're saying. Okay, so um, as you just mentioned, you know, there's a lot going on in the last few days about it. Everything is basically written already. It's it's public in the media and the magazines online. I would just like to conclude with one uh, statement we, we just uh, I just heard on last Friday. Basically, we attend a, a meeting in the OU headquarters about uh, the... Um, Totally different topic, but we had uh, a read a conversation with uh, Rabbi Herzl Shechter, the Rosh Yeshiva of uh, Yeshiva University, and Rabbi Poisek from the OU. So at the end of the conversation, we couldn't ignore this very hot topic, and we asked the Rabbi for his opinion about it. And he he told us yes, the guy just came to us on this Wednesday to the Yeshiva, and show me the material and ask for my opinion. And I'm just sitting now in front of the Mishnah Bura and I'm trying to look into all places and the Maram Koim is very suggest me to look into it. And I can really not understand how could it be less than a Groma? Now, for those that don't know what Groma is on Shabbos, you can't light a fire. Electricity is considered lighting a fire. Groma means you're not doing it directly, but it's an indirect. It's like pushing a button and something else hits something else, which will in turn uh, put on the lights. That's really what a grama would be. Correct. In addition, in addition to this, I would really want to take the attention from the listeners to a very strong letter published by a very respected Rav in our community, a prime Sola Levi Belsky, and the Rosh of Torah Vodas. And I know that there is a lot going on around his letter. I would like to make clear two things. Number one, how this is going to get out to the public. And number two, trying to explain a little bit the approach and his shit uh, and, and about this device. First of all, the letter didn't come out uh, through uh, emotions. I got a phone call on Sunday from Rabdovid Ribiat, a Choshev Roshkoilal, and for Shay Monsi. And he asked me to attend a meeting together with him by his uncle, Ravelski Schlitter. We came over to Ravelski on Sunday night. Ravelski was, Ravelski is not so healthy and not so young, and he came on the same day back from Israel, and he was all overtaken. And he explained to us almost an hour exactly what his shitter and why he's holding that is a chiv chatos, the rice, the rice and the issue using this switch. Then he says, I'm going to write a letter 
I'm not gonna write this right away because I need I need to be very careful on every word and make sure the word understand exactly what's going on and what is my opinion. Three days after it, on Wednesday morning, our boss called me up and asked me to come over to the Yeshiva and Torah with us and take the letter. Yeah, it, it took this letter and he wrote it in front of me every word and then he gave it to me. So basically, what Rubelski is saying over there, there's, there's a isu de oiraiser to use this switch. He says basically that the whole issue about groma, which is called the indirect action, is when, when the action is happening you know, by, by chance, is not something that you create exactly to made. And it's designed specially to work like this. And this approach, as Rabelsky, Rabelsky put uh, some note about it, he, he said about the Gemara and, and Baba Kame, talking about Zohar of Ruch Misayato, and I would like to say that there's a, a big sugi and there's a lot of Mara Makoim is talking about this issue. There's a, a Rosh talking, talking about it in Beitza, and the Shachonor and Simon Reish Samachai is talking about it. There's a true Menachi Ezer, Simon Samach. And there's a lot of poskim in today's generation, including Rav Yashiv and Orzeh Shabbos, Rav Moshe Sternbuch and Shuvah Zvan Hogus, and Rav Shlomo Zalman and Shemir Shabbos and Chuso, taking, taking the approach and saying that groma, indirect, is only considered groma if it's something going to happen by, by, by accident. Let's say I'm opening the door and there's a wind coming in. Okay, so the wind is going on by itself, and I'm opening a door, and by opening the door, the wind is coming in. But if I'm designing something created, especially to work like this, it's not going to be. It's not going to be considered as a groma, an indirect action. It's going to be considered as a direct action. So anything results to this action will be will be considered as a as a malacha de Now, what I want to do is I want to turn for a moment, and we appreciate that he's joining with us on the air again. And I'm referring to uh, your colleague. I know you're doing some work for the various companies that are dealing with this uh, issue. And I'm looking at <coughs> Nachman Delman, who's the president uh, in charge of marketing for Isman Technologies. So, Nachman, welcome to the program. Thank you for joining with us. And I know we're going to get back to the kosher switch and the questions. If you know, it's if it's easy. But uh, what we're saying, what you're saying now, is that it's using electricity. On sh- it's the same as using electricity. It's not a grum, and we'll talk about it in a few moments because they have their experts that claim differently. But is how does the Mon technology work? Is that using electricity uh, on Shabbos? How is that so different here, from kosher right. switch? Uh, there's two things I want to clarify. First of all, this Mon switch is a totally different product that does something totally different, um, and that's one reason I'm here. Is that people shouldn't confuse the two. Um, the demand switch was created with input from not just the Rabbonim, but we're talking about the greatest post game of our generation from every circle. And, you know, they made sure to have everybody on board um, when they created it. Some people wondered why did the product need so much rabbinic input and rabbinic insight. And the Rabbonim not only give their haskama, they actually encourage everybody to use it. Um, and people wondered at the time, why do you need so much rabbinic input? And this is where it, this is really where it shows. Because the kosher switch people may have had very good intentions, and I'm not questioning their motivations, their intentions may have been good, may not, I don't know. Um, but they actually raised some very valid points on their promotional video. Um, they talk about the problems of people switching on lights and off, lights on and off accidentally on Shabbos. They talk about having to spend meals in the dark. They talk about the shortcomings of the Shabbos clock that we use, which are like, you know, 50 years old, weren't created for our needs and our purposes. And they talk about the problem of using non-Jews to do malachas for us, which is very questionable in many cases, and the use of children, people using children. All these things, that these are all raised on the Kosher Switch's promotional video as the motivations behind their product. And it's interesting, the demand switch really addresses every single one of these issues. Um, you know, and just the notion that how could it be that in today's day and age when technology can do everything, Technology can run buildings in Manhattan um, for everything from lighting to heating to electricity, and we can't figure out a way to use technology, to harness technology, to enhance Shemir Shabbos and to avoid all of these problems. Um, and like I said, the, the motivation behind 
kosher, which may have been very noble, but if you look at looking at the you know what's going on on the web and the comments that people are making or the comments that were made on the crowdfunding site where the people where they actually raised fifty thousand dollars in just three days, and the people comments you know what the motive, what motivated them to give that money, and you see the motivation is. I want to have the freedom to flip that switch on Shabbos. That's you know that's something I want to do. I'm, I feel restrained by Shabbos. And I want to have the freedom to flip that switch, and that's really where the difference is. And that's what they're about. And that's so what you're not asking. Is. What you're basically doing is you're programming that it should go on and off at a certain time. So you're not the person's not doing anything on Shabbos. Everything is programmed year round. So therefore, there's no problem if anybody has to do anything. It's already More done. Than that the first motivation for the Zionists was that it kills the switch for Shabbos. So there's no accidental on and off. Um, which an accidental on and off is many of the farms say that's not even a shogig. It's worse than a shogig because it's negligence and it's carelessness. Um, and some many many folks can believe that that's worse than a shogig. And actually, the one who invented it actually turned on a light on Yom Kippur, and he felt very bad about it. And he said, you know, I used to work for the U.S. Army. I was an inventor, and I'm going to I'm going to fix this thing that I just did on Yom Kippur. He told Hashem, I'm going to come up with a product that's going to protect people and prevent people from accidentally turning switches on and off. That's really where it started from. And that's one thing that the man switch does. And then it also avoids the problems that the Shabbos clocks have with accidents and mix-ups. This thing has the Jewish calendar. Let, let me explain the product. It's a mini-computer that has all the Zamana for Shabbos for every city in America or any, anywhere in America, a uh, program for the next 50 years, and the schedule, you know, Shabbos and Yontif, first night Yontif, second night Yontif, and somebody can just put in his settings once. You know, my Pesach Seder finishes 2 in the morning. Um, the second night Seder, we go to Zaydi, so we're not home. So second night Seder, uh, we should go over early. And then the computer memorizes it, and he never has to do anything. Even Friday afternoon, he doesn't have to, he doesn't have to put it into Shabbos mode. There's nothing. He has, to, he has to do nothing. And so there's no accidents, no mix-ups, no accidental on and off. Um, and so the motivation is pure, and and we're retaining Shabbos the way the way it was the way it was intended, um, and we're beautifying Shabbos and enhancing Shabbos and taking away the stress from Friday afternoon, where people would run around the house putting on scotch tape yeah, and Velcro right. and all the switches, <laughs> putting um, on the refrigerator and right and taping up. So let me just turn to Rabbi Orkin before break. We're going to take phone calls in just a few moments. I'm looking at the kosher switch room. We did invite them on. Hopefully they'll join us next week. But they have a list of gedolim, rabbanim, rabbis that endorse them. Hagon Rav Chaim Pinchas Scheinberg and Hagon Rav Yeshua Newworth. And I'm looking at Rabbi Noah Isaac Goldbaum. And they have Rabbi uh, David Shofet. And they have uh, uh, others, Rav Peret Steinberg and Hagon Rav so they have a lot of prominent people that they say endorse them. So is this a machlokas, an argument between different rabbanim about what constitutes Chilo Shabbos or what's not Chilo Shabbos as far as using the switch? Rabbi Orton, do you want to take this? Rabbi Orton, yes. Yeah, you're asking me a really hard question because there's a lot going going on. Whether it's it's really or not. So I would like to to attack, you know, very, very strong and and say something about it because most of the information is available already for the public. No, I'm saying because, but you're saying when you quote Rabbi Belsky, but they have others that say that it is kosher. So it seems like a pretty interesting debate discussion as to what's kosher or not, uh, because you have some prominent people say yes and some prominent people say no. At least according to the information that we have in our hands right now. No, not really. Because that, that I'm trying to say that there's, it's questionable either if the Rabbonim say that, and even even if they say they didn't, most of them didn't say to allow this device for popular use. Most of them, most of them are writing in their in the letter. If you're going to be able to click on any on any on any letter over there, you're going to see that most of them allowed to use it only for for certain conditions or purposes. We're speaking with Rabbi Tzvi Orton, head of Halakhic Tech USA. He's also a consultant to Zman Technology. Nachman Dolman is in charge of marketing for Zman Technologies. When we come back, we're taking your phone calls, 1-888-NYC-RADIO, 1-888-NYC-RADIO, or 1-888-692-7234. You have questions 
about the kosher switch and how, what can you do on Shabbos, what you can do from a technology point of view. Uh, we're exploring that uh, tonight. One eight 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 NYC Radio. If you're in the dark about using electricity on Shabbos, you an opportunity to be enlightened. You want to email us? That's a wonderful way of getting your questions answered as well. Z E V at talklinecommunications dot com is the email address. Z E V at talklinecommunications dot com. If you are, are s- one more information about technology, and we're going to look at some what you can do on Shabbos, what you can't do on, sh- what you can and can't do on Shabbos. Things have changed. We'll look at LED lights, look at some other things. There's been a whole revolution, and electricity has changed since this first came out, and we'll explore that as well. We come back. Our we continue our discussion, looking at what is electrifying for Shabbos. One eight 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 six nine two seven two three four. One eight 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 six nine two seven two three four. You have any questions? We are happy to entertain them. We're also going to give away. I believe we have some left over from last week. Some twenty five dollar gift certificates to the ice cream house at different locations, including Borough mm-hmm. Park and Flower. Yes, a good questions. Uh, we're going to reward you with that as well. So one eight 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 NYC radio our numbers. We're gonna be right back. That's one eight eight NYC radio or one eight 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 six nine two seven two three four. We're gonna be right back and let me just remind you about the iPhone screen repair guys. Isaac does a fantastic job fixing iPhones, iPads, laptops. So go to the brand new location. Opens Monday, 1279 49th Street, near the B11 bus and borough. Part of marketing for his Mon Technologies. We're taking your email, Zev at TalkLineCommunications.com. That's Z-V at TalkLineCommunications.com. Also, your phone calls, 1-888-NYC-RADIO, 888-692-7234. Good questions. We'll get rewarded with a $25 gift certificate to the ice cream house. Let's go to some questions right now from our audience, and uh, let's go to an email question. And uh, Joseph writes, uh, why can't the public see all the letters from the Godolim so we can see all the explanations and exceptions instead of hearing it second or third hand? We need more transparency. Anybody want to tackle that? Rabbi Ortner. The information is basically available on the public media and online. You just have to look into it carefully and understand what they're saying exactly. No, but I think people are just confused because, as I mentioned, you know, you said uh, that you know, there are a lot of the Rabbi Belsky and others are opposed to what's going on with the kosher switch. Kosher switch will put up in some letters and show that they have other leading rabbis that support them. So I think the general public is confused as to what's going on. That's what this listener is writing. Right. So that's why I'm trying to say that you have to look into these letters. You know, the what I'm saying is, work. don't rely on the translation. Open the letter. A lot of them are from Israeli rabbis. A lot of them are just uh, blessings, blessing them that they should be successful in their endeavors. And they're just saying that those are approbations. And when you open the letter, all you see that all it is are Bishar and Biggs wishing them success in their endeavor, which may have been a, a device that they were creating for a hospital. Uh, Bishar and Biggs was Nifter nice few years ago. Uh, that letter is over five years old. We don't know what he was talking about in that letter. Um, the, the switch has still not been mass produced. They only have a prototype at this point, and that just hit, you know, the prototype just set the news last week, and they're pulling out a letter from five years ago. We have no idea what context that letter was written. Rabbi Neuvitz's letter was clearly taken out of context when he was still alive, and then he actually wrote, uh, Rabbi Neuvitz is not here, is not with us a few years already as well. Um, three years ago, he wrote a, a clarification when he found out the, that they were using his approbation as promoting this as a popular product for everybody to use, he wrote another letter writing that um, he never meant that. He meant this is good for hospitals to lessen the severity of what's being done in a case where there has to be Chol Shabbos. Anyway, Rabbi Harfness from Williamsburg, they took his letter out of context, and he, w- he went even stronger. He issued a letter, um, not this past Friday, the Friday before that, when he saw what they were doing. He said, not only am I clarifying what I originally stated, but I want you to pull back my letter Altogether, because I can't trust you, you're taking what I'm writing out of context. I don't want to have anything to do with this. And the same thing with others, Chaim Tzvi Shapiro from Israel, um, and others. Um, Rabbi Yotin dealt with them firsthand. He can tell you more about this. Rabbi Belsky had to actually send down the OU, an attorney that works for the OU, because they were using him also originally, and that's why he's, that's why he's really upset. 
Um, he has to send an attorney after them, or he couldn't get them to take it down from their website. So, like I said before, maybe their initial motives may have been pure, but the way they're acting now and the way they're using it now is, um, it's, you know, it's really, it really tells us a lot about the people behind this. We'll hope uh, to have them next week, in which case they can uh, explain but, some of the issues. Here's well, an email because we lined them up side by side, the letter, you know, what they're mm -hmm. saying, and then the retraction that's been issued um, as the clarification, and you see that there's some kind of deceit going on here. Here's an email question from Brooklyn. Rav Moshe Feinstein was against all Shabbos clocks. Would he have endorsed Zaman Technologies? He actually allowed it for light. Let, let me clarify that a little bit about this. Number one, actually, Moshe Feinstein is talking about the timers in general, but he mentioned clearly that a timer for, for the lighting is allowed to use. He's, he's only talking about, about uh, timers for different appliances in the house. That's number one. Number and two, the way he differentiated it is he... he, he let me, let me just finish. Number, number two, uh, Moshe Feinstein is not talking about halachic issues. Moshe Feinstein is talking about a, a different issue, which is a very important issue, and talking about the issue of Zilus and the Shabbat, the, the Shabbat spirit, and he's saying that if Chazal will be today, they will, they will be prohibited to do like Amir al-Akum, like you're not allowed to, to tell a non-Jewish person to do something for you, because then you can do everything you want during Shabbat. So with the time, you can actually run a whole, whole company with that. So it's not a comparison to our conversation is because here we're talking about a device who has some serious alochic issues by using it. Nachum, you were going to say something. Right, I'm just referring again to this man switch, why um, Moshe had a problem in general that he said, where's this going to end, where's this going to take us to if we're going to start allowing everybody to use um, the Shabbos clock, which should be 100% permissible. There's no problem with it in Shabbos. Um, if we're going to be allowed to let people use that, who knows where this will go. Next thing you know, people will have their factories operating on Shabbos. Um, and, and he's saying if Chazal would have been around, they would have had a problem with this. And that's why you really need, it's not enough to have competent post for such kind of questions when new technology arises and you're, doing, you're, you're creating new landmark rulings. You have to go all the way to the top. You have to go to the leaders of the generation. They're the ones who have to weigh in on this because they have the foresight to see where this can lead and what kind of problems this can create. So I'm moving away for a moment from the real halachic problems with the kosher switch. I'm saying you need inside and input from the biggest halachic decisors because they have a they have the foresight and the vision to see where this can lead to. And that's where Moshe Feinstein was concerned. Um, and that's why he said lighting I'm going to allow, because in Europe it was common um, when they dominated Yom Kippur and Neo, they needed lights to read from the master. They would bring in a guy in some communities, some didn't, but some did. They would bring in a guy to light lamps for Neo so they can daven. Um, so he said, being that this was already allowed, I'm going to allow it, Shabbos Cox for that, but I don't want this to, this is a slippery slope. And I want to stop this before it gets out of hand. So that's the Zilva Shabbos issue, which is very, very serious, and that shows us that's where you need the guidance of, of you know. Because based on that, you can put on a Shabbos clock for your TV. Right. You can, okay. can go anywhere. So, um, so there's two issues here. There's the issue of the issue of Chil Shabbos itself, which Arvidelsky is saying is extremely, extremely serious. And then we have there's another letter issued by Rabbi Kamenetsky or David Feinstein or Shlomo Miller. Um, you know, also writing similarly that there's a serious Chil Shabbat issue, and then there's a Zilvo Shabbat issue, which there were others who deferred from Rabbi Moshe Feinstein, but again, they were, these were the top, these were the generation's leaders, um, and they all felt that this needs, you need consensus on this, you need consensus from the generation's leaders. When you want to innovate something like that, you want to tell me, like a flip a switch on Shabbat, that's something big, that's something that has to go all the way to the top, and it's not just enough to go to a pulpit rabbi, um, from your community and, 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 you know, and just put up this thing online and say, look, we have six rabbis. Look at that, six rabbis. They all have smicha. They're all out to Paskin. Um, you know, you need more than that for something like this. And, and that's why this man switch really went through all those lengths, to get everybody on board, everybody across the board, every community. You know, it's interesting. I was talking to a prominent member of the West Side Jewish community, Leslie, uh, West Reich today, and he said, listen, let's say you can find, everybody would agree that the technology is there where you can put on a switch on shot, electricity would be fine, and Reb Chaim Ozer, I believe, initially thought that electricity was okay, but he was overruled by many of the other Gadolm, leading rabbis. 
But let's say it's okay, but then the whole Shabbos would change. And if you can put on a, a, a TV, you can put on different like, appliances, you can do things that would take away from the spirit of Shabbos if that were to change. And it was right, an so that's why Hashem gives us leaders. It gives every generation leaders. And we were promised, you know, that there will always be leaders of the generation that will lead us and tell us you know, where, where we're heading down a slippery slope and where we're not. Before we break, I want to ask Rabbi Orton this question, though. There's, there has been some change in electricity. Let's look at LED lights. Is that okay to use on Shabbos? What's the status? Because that's a little different. doesn't emit heat. It's not electricity the same way that we know it. So I've seen different things. I'd like to get your opinion about that. The conversation about the, the LED lights is going around for the last, uh, I would say, the last uh, five, six years mm-hmm. since LED is getting more popular and, 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 and the use. There's, there's two opinions over it. Everyone knows that there's two major opinions about using electricity in general. There's the Chazanish saying that it's it's causing a maloch of boina, and there's the, the general opinion that it's an issue of moilit, that you're not allowed to create something new on Shabbos. The major difference is that according to Chazanish, it's a biblical issue, and according to the to the to the other poskim, it's a rabbinical issue. Here in LED, the question is getting bigger. Whether anything you create on Shabbos is a problem, so you you can take every every new thing that's that, that happening on Shabbos is a problem with Moilit. So here in the LED, it's not a really issue of electricity. The LED is like an MP going together, which is a, a it's creating a a, a reaction which create lighting. This is something new. So the question is if we, if we are allowed to, to compare this to electricity or not. Basically, I would say, even if there are, there's, a few, there's a few opinion about it, but most of the post are still saying that it's an issue of Moilit, so at least with the you're not allowed to use it. A major difference is according to the issue of Mukta, we're not we're not even allowed to to move a a a bolt on a Shabbos because the because the the bolt is is, is calling a gechelas al matres which is called a, like like a fire so there's an issue of mukta also and LED at least most of the poskim saying that it's not a fire so you're allowed to move it on Shabbos but to turn on a LED light on Shabbos is a little bit more complicated according to the Allah. Rabbi Tzvi Ordner is head of Halakhic Tech USA, and Nachum Dolman is in charge of marketing for his Mont Technologies, which has a product that makes it easier for people to have lights turned on and off by pre-programming it before Shabbos. It's programmed for 50 years. When we come back, our final stretch, we only have a few moments left when we come back, uh, we'll take some more of your emails, zev at talklinecommunications.com, zev at talklinecommunications.com, or one eight 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 nyc radio And I remind you about the screen repair guys, the iPhone screen repair guys, are now open starting Monday in Borough Park, 1279-46-2300. That's 718-436-2300. And you'll proudly smile as well. Final stretch, only a few moments left with Rabbi Tzvi Orton, head of Halakhic Tech USA, Nachman Doman. He is the more charge of marketing for Zman Technology. We're taking some more of your email questions, zev at talklinecommunications.com, zev at talklinecommunications.com. Here's a, you can Facebook question. Here's a Facebook question for you gentlemen. Fifty years ago, we had authorities saying that timers were problematic in terms of use on Shabbos. We see them being widely accepted today. Do you think that the Shabbos switch will become more widely accepted, let's say, in the use in facilities such as hospitals, for instance? We have a smartphone Shabbos app already that works on similar technology. We have hospitals that are using buttons to push for nurses. They'll randomly dial within 30 seconds immediately after being pressed. I don't think so. I think um, I think their Moshe's landmark ruling was followed to some degree. And you see that there is, there is there, we do have some sort of control in talking in popular use in homes, where the Shabbos clock never went further, never went past the lights or the air conditioners. It's different because you know, the thermostats turn them on and off anyway, so the air conditioners go on and off anyway all the time by automation. But they never really went past that, and and. Um, the use of these devices in hospitals is very different because those are cases where they would have to be used anyway. 
or the or the Grumba can make it into the Rabbanon, and the Rabbanon do not make their Xera, even if it's not a serious illness, even, you know, just a slight illness, even a Cholish Aimbe Sakana, the Rabbanon did not make Xera, so once it's a Grumba, um, it becomes the Rabbanon, and then they have to follow the ruling of their own Rabbanon. Uh, the Asper, there were Rabbanon who were strongly against it, and there were Rabbanon who were for it, um, but that's beyond the point of this discussion. Now, we're talking about for popular use for people to use as a, as a matter of convenience, and where this can lead to, and, and you know, it's pretty much across the board. The serum against it are pretty much across the board from every circle, every, you know, every community. Now, we, we have from all that. I do want you, Nachum, to tell us about the Zman technology. His name is Nachum. I just want to Nachum. correct you. Nachum, if people want to get information about the Zman technology, you're using technology where it's, it's, pre, it's pro, pre-programmed. How can people do so? Because okay, so they can look it up on the web. It's zmantechnologies.com. Um, there's a beautiful site there, and all the Rabbanim, the endorsements, and um, the, the Rabbanim who actually, who actually promoted it and said that this is something people should buy. So Miller from Toronto actually wrote a very strong letter that he believes this is something that everybody should have in their home to avoid accidental use of lighting on Shabbos. Um, he actually pushes it. Um, other Rabbanim as well. Um, the Rabbanim were very, very excited when we were producing this, and they were very much promoting it. I think this man switch is important because a lot of the sediment that people have is that one of them have a problem with technology, they have a problem with new things, they don't like new things, they're afraid of technology, they don't understand it. And the Zaman switch proves that one of them do understand technology very, very well, and have a clear grasp. I mean, it was unbelievable when we would sit with the Rabbanim, or some of them would throw things at us. Um, the the Rabbanim are very, very well, well, well versed in technology, and they have a clear understanding, and they're very open, and they're very, they embrace technology when it enhances Shabbos. And when they see that it can be harnessed for good purposes, and then when they smell something wrong with the product, they smell an urge to be able to flip switches, they have a problem with that. It, it makes Shabbos seem like a burden, the way Rebelsky and Rebelsky and the others wrote about this. Um, you know, they sense something wrong with this. So, Nachum and Delman, I thank you for being with us in charge of marketing with Mon Technology. We look forward to having you back. Rabbi Tzvi Orton, head of Halachic Tech USA, thank you for being part of our broadcast. We only scratched the surface. And hopefully we'll have you back again and take more questions about some of these important issues dealing with electricity and Shabbos. Thank you for being part of the show tonight. Thank you, Zav. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Good luck, gentlemen. Good luck. Mm-hmm. And uh, we'll just remind you about the iPhone screen repair guys at 1279 49th Street near B11 bus. Opens Monday, this coming Monday. Call them, 718-677-4343. Don't forget we're on Wednesday, Thursday nights from 7 to 9 p.m. on WSNR 620 a.m. And now we're going to hear from Ralph Malik with some good energy information uh, coming up uh, right now. And uh, you're listening to the Talk Line Communications Network over at WMCA 570 a.m. And don't forget to become a fan of Talk Line on Facebook, on uh, on Twitter, on Google Plus. Twitter, it's Talk Line Network, but on Facebook, LinkedIn, Google Plus, it's Talk Line uh, Communications. Okay, and we're going to hear from Ralph Malik and some energy ideas where you can participate. Welcome back to the program. I'm Zev Brenner. With us once again, Ralph Malik. He's a senior at Viridian. He is also a consultant to windenergyandsolar.com. Thank you for joining us once again. I know you've, we're involved with the solar industry, so, so are you. Solar is hot. People don't even realize the potential that their home has, A, to make money for themselves and also for their friends. So tell us about it. Okay, I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, so solar is actually a really big opportunity right now for so many people to take advantage of this. Uh, there's been many concepts and theories that solar is very expensive for uh, the general homeowner. Uh, in some instances, some people have said that uh, when they looked into solar, it could have been as expensive as forty or $50,000 for a federal home. But right now, through some initiatives and some incentives, that Solar City, the largest solar manufacturer in the United States, uh, right now, Viridian and Solar City has partnered up, and we came up with a program where actually people can get solar installed on their homes for literally no money out of pocket. They don't even have to maintain the unit. Solar City will maintain that unit for 20 years. And uh, the bottom line is you can have solar installed in your home and save in upwards of 50 to as high as almost 100% on your utility bill in respect to electricity by having free solar installed. And uh, the concept here is basically you're leasing the unit 
in, in essence, you're renting your roof. So how much value does your roof have when the solar company goes out and installs your roof? So they actually sell you the electricity that it produces at 50 to even 100 percent cheaper than your utility bill, and it guarantees you that rate for a course of 40 years. So solar in this marketplace right now is very hot. Uh, they're estimating about 3.8 million customers uh, within the next two to three years will have solar installed on their home. So it's a, it's a really great market and great opportunity to uh, enroll in that and see if you're uh, what the value of your roof can be right back. So basically speaking, if you're a homeowner and have a roof facing the sun, you could be eligible? Yes, if your home faces the sun, you're more eligible, but uh, you're going to possibly get the most value. But even if your home doesn't face the sun, uh, you know, solar doesn't generally work uh, directly with sunlight. It also works on UV as well. So if you're not sure, the best thing to do is definitely get your free consultation. And we have a website and a phone number that you guys can call. So our phone number is 844-WIN-WIN Solar. Or uh, we also have uh, other products. I'm pretty sure you'll be asking about them, and I'll provide the number shortly. Or you can go to our website at win, W I N, energy, and solar.com. Win, energy, and solar.com. The word and spelled out. Now, I just also want to mention that if somebody doesn't have a home, can they still save money and energy? Yes, because we have another product, which is through the form of deregulation. Deregulation has been around for many, many years. It's uh, been uh, really impactful, especially in, uh, in uh, uh, New York, in New Jersey, Connecticut, and so many neighboring states, because it gives the homeowner the ability to deregulate their bill and buy their utility through a third-party supplier that's cheaper than their current utility company. So just to give you an example, right now, Viridian Energy has a program where they can lock you in for a guaranteed three-year fixed rate. So your rate does not fluctuate over the course of three years. So it's a guaranteed rate. And it also comes back with a 110% money-back rate guarantee in the event that over the course of those three years that you possibly could have overpaid uh, with uh, Viridian uh, versus a utility company. So it's a win-win situation, especially with the viability of the market. We've seen in many instances, especially last year, and the number to call uh, is 1-844-WIN-ENERGY, 1-844-WIN-ENERGY. There are opportunities if you're looking to make money. They have promotions at the end of April. We get extra bonuses and extra money for signing up to be a sign up people for energy or for solar. 1-844-WIN-ENERGY. Speak to Mrs. Cohn. 1-844-WIN-ENERGY. That's about all the time we have for tonight. Join us again weeknights, WSNR, 620 a.m. And you can go anytime online, 24 hours a day, talklinecommunications.com or 212-769-1925, extension 301. Thank you, Jake. Thank you, Jason.